Hey there, I'm KJ Walker from Decentraland and Low Poly Models World, and today we're going to learn about materials and textures for 3D assets. Decentraland's rendering engine works a little differently to Blender, so there are a few things to take into consideration when it comes to object materials. So, let's get into it. Firstly, let's take a quick look at the difference between materials and textures. A material is like a container of surface information. It has properties like roughness, specularity and emission, which can be adjusted and controlled. A material can have one base colour or a texture can be added to the material to give it a colour atlas or pattern. Materials with one base colour are much more performant than those with textures. However, in scenes with many colours, it can be more efficient to have one texture which has a colour atlas in order to use multiple colours with only one material. Textures in Decentraland have to follow certain sizes in order to work. You can find a link to this documentation in the box below. The largest recommended size for an image is 512 by 512 pixels. You can find many ready-made color atlases and textures in the Decentraland GitHub. Some examples of those are linked below. To make a material in Blender which is compatible with Decentraland, you need a principled BSDF node. You can use just this node with the material output and choose a base color, or you can plug in an image texture into the base color of the principled BSDF node. To make a metal, increase the metalness factor on your principled BSDF node, reduce the roughness and leave a little specularity. You can play around with the values to get the material you're looking for. Bear in mind that the metal factor is read strongly in Decentraland and will not reflect objects on its surface. It only reflects the sky. To make a rough material, decrease the metal and specularity values of the principled BSDF node and increase the roughness. For a highly saturated color, go for zero specularity and a roughness factor of one. To make a transparent material, go into the Properties panel and change the Blend mode of your material from Opaque to Alpha Blend. Use an image editor such as Photoshop or GIMP to reduce the opacity of your image. Make sure to export the new image in PNG format and then connect it to the principled BSDF node. As well as connecting color with base color, connect Alpha with Alpha. Now you have a transparent material and you can modify the surface properties like roughness and specularity to your liking. To make an emissive or glowing material, adjust the emission factor of the principled BSDF node. You can choose the colour of glow from the colour wheel and the brightness or intensity by changing the value of grey. Black is equal to zero emission and white is 100% glow. Decentraland reads emission strongly, so you will likely want a medium to dark colour for this. If using an image texture, you can add more details to the material, such as different colours and degrees of emission. The most efficient way to do this is to use the same image texture for the base colour and its glow. So plug the colour value into the emission factor of the principled BSDF node. If you need more detail, you can create another image for emission and plug that into the node. There's also a trick we can use to save on performance. If you check backface culling on your materials, the engine won't render the backface. That's a lot of calculations that can be skipped and it will make your model lighter. That wraps up the basics for materials and textures in Decentraland. If you'd like to learn more about building for Decentraland, you can take a look at this playlist. I hope that was helpful. If you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, please put them in the comment section below. Check out the box for links to relevant documentation and feel free to visit my website, Low Poly Models as well.